because I am sold into slavery with sin as my master. I don't understand myself at all, for I really want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do the very thing I hate. I know perfectly well what I am doing is wrong, and my bad conscience shows that I agree that the law is good. But I can't help myself because it is sin inside of me that makes me do these evil things. I know I am rotten through and through so far as my old sinful nature is concerned. No matter which way I turn, I can't make myself do right. I want to, but I can't. When I want to do good, I don't. And when I try to do wrong, I do it. And when I try not to do wrong, I do it anyway. But if I am doing what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing it. The sin within me is doing it. It seems to be a fact of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God, God's law with all my heart, but there is another law at work within me that is at war with my mind. This law wins the fight and makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is doomed by sin? Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Now, I want to stop right there, and I want to talk about that. Okay, now this is Paul. This is the Apostle Paul, all right? Uh, you know, he's converted from a persecuting Christians. He, he practiced the Jewish law, a uh, scribe, and, uh, and he, he was very educated in the law. And uh, one day, Jesus came and visited him in Damascus, and his life changed forever. Then he became a, a, a ambassador for Christ, you know, going out, preaching th through the whole world. Now, this is a time when he's doing this. He's in Rome, okay, uh, preaching to the Romans. And, uh, and he's telling us he still has a struggle with sin. So I want to know, is he a hypocrite? It's a tough one. And he also tells you in another chapter, in uh, Corinthians, what is that? Is that 1 Corinthians chapter 15? Something like that. I think 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where he talks about the thorn, the thorn in the flesh, or it might be. Nah, it's uh, the 2 second, second Corinthians. 2 Corinthians verse, yeah, and it's uh, chapter 12. So look, so this, and this is another instance where Paul tells you he has a thorn in the flesh. He has a little messenger here to tor torment him from the devil. He asked the Lord three times to let it go, to take it away from him. And the Lord said, no. He said, my gracious faith, this is what Jesus told Paul. And I could read the whole thing. See, that's what I'm saying. Y'all can trust me. I'm reading from the Bible. That's what I give y'all, man. Y'all can't trust nothing else. Trust that. Mm -hmm. This boasting is all so foolish. But let me go on. Let me tell you about the visions and revelations I received from the Lord. I was caught up into the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether my body was there or just my spirit, I, do, I don't know. Only God knows. But I do know that I was caught up into paradise and heard things so astounding that they cannot be told. That experience is something worth boasting about, but I am not going to do it. I am going to boast only about my weaknesses. I have plenty to boast about and would be no fool in doing it because I will be telling the truth. But I won't do it. I want more. I won't. I don't want any more anyone to think more highly of me than what they can actually see in my life and in, and in and my message. 
even though I have received wonderful revelations from God. But to keep me from getting puffed up, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from getting proud. Three times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my gracious favor is all you need. My power works best in your weaknesses. Now, why would he tell Paul this? Now, Paul is an apostle, apostle everywhere. He's going all over the land and he's preaching hard, you know, and with the Holy Spirit. Just the same one that we have, the ones who believe that Jesus died for us and rose up on the third day, you know, ready to come. He's going to come get us in the rapture. That's what we believe in. And so uh, the people with the Holy Spirit, you know, they uh, they have problems, you know what I mean? They, they have still have weaknesses. And Jesus is saying, yes, that is correct. But guess what? My grace, first of all, is me dying for you. My grace is me, is me dying for you. Is Jesus dying for you? And then you believe in that he died for your sins and rose up on the third day. And that he's one day going to return in the heavens, on the cloud of heaven, glorifying, glorifying God the Father. He's going to come big time with his angels and come get everyone, everyone that has died and the whole entire, everyone that has died in the name of Jesus and everyone that's still on the earth. He's going to get them. It's in scripture. And, uh, and so let me see here. My gracious favor is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. And so, and so now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may work through me. Since I know it is all for Christ's good, I am quite content with my weaknesses and with insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So according to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I am doing it the correct way by what I mean by that is coming to y'all with the truth. And my, I have weaknesses, but it says that my Lord, gracious favor, that he died for me, don't mean that I, I get no pass to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? All sin is bad. All sin is all sin is bad, no matter what, man. It is, you know? Now, y'all can't never call me a hypocrite because all I'm saying is that it's bad. But just like Paul, he's saying sin is bad, but I still do it. I still have, I still am doing it. I still do it. I don't want to. I don't even like myself because I do it. But I do it. And I'm slave to sin still. I'm, sl I'm slave to sin, but still at the same time, I'm saved. Because Jesus, where I'm insufficient, Jesus Christ, death, death on the cross. And him ri rising up on the third day. That's sufficient. Me believing that. And believing he's my Lord and Savior, that is what saves me. That's what saves me. Not anything I can do. I'm never justified by my works. It says that in our good book. We're not justified by our good works. We're not justified by our works. We're justified by our belief in Jesus Christ. And then you fill with the Holy Spirit and the, the Holy Ghost. And then you are then you are his vessel. Then you are to be worked, worked through, through him with your imperfect self. Everyone is imperfect. No one is perfect, okay? No one. But we all want to narrow, keep narrowing them down, you know, keep knocking them off the list, knocking them off the list. Yeah, I used to do this, but I don't do it no more. I used to do this. I don't do it no more. You know what I mean? Like, knocking them off, you know, knocking them off. This is, you know, you, you deal with a, a young man, a young man. You know what I mean? That's what it say. It say, in one of them, I can't remember if it was Timothy or what, but he was just like, you know, older men, they don't have to wear, they, don't, they, they live a, a, a more quieter life. Older women and older men tend to live a more quiet life than a young person. So, you know, the, the younger man, he, he tell them more stuff than he tell the older people because the young people are still young. They have more temptation than the older people, man. That's my opinion because by the old, you get older, man, you get wild, you do get wise, you get body gets, you start getting a little bit, you know, like, hey, I'm ready to chill out a little bit more, you know, I ain't like that no more, you know, you just start changing, but at a young age, you know, it's a lot more, a lot more things out there to get into than I feel like for older people, 
And so, you know, 